The all new 2022 BRZ orders close out. Subaru drops new STI Sport models at the Tokyo Auto Show, including the new ERA. And Travis Pastrana shows off his 1983 GL station wagon Jim Conacar. Today is January 23rd, 2022, and this is Subaru News. The all new 2022 BRZ has been selling like hotcakes. So much so that on January 14th, Subaru had to completely close out custom orders of the vehicle. Now, if you wanna order a custom BRZ, the allotment's full. You'll have to wait until 2023 model year. Now, that's not to say that you can't go to the Subaru dealership and buy a 2022 BRZ. They're still gonna be getting in plenty of not sold order inventory. But if you want your own custom ordered one, you're out of luck for this model year. Now, I don't see that as being such a big thing because there's not really that many options on the new BRZ. You literally have a handful of options. You get to pick if you want a premium or a limited, if you want a six-speed automatic or a six-speed manual, or one of seven colors. That's it. Everything else is just optional accessories that any dealer can order and install on the vehicle. So I don't understand what the big deal is. Uh, it's not gonna be that hard to find, say, an automatic limited in red or an automatic premium in blue, or, you know, it's not that many combinations out there. Likely, if there's a BRZ combo you want, one US dealer somewhere is gonna have it and you can have it transferred. Uh, you might have to go out of state to purchase it, but, you know, they're gonna be around. I really don't see it being a super critical thing for BRZ owners. And most of you that were going to custom order one have already done so. And, uh, you know, you're not really uh, going to be upset by the fact that the custom orders have closed out. But again, it's crazy that the 2022 is selling that well that the custom orders have already filled up and been cut off as of January 14th. So what say you, all of you 2022 BRZ potential owners? Leave it down in the comments below. Did you order a 2022 BRZ? Were you planning to order one? Or are you just gonna wait and see what shows up on dealer lots? Let me know down in the comment section below. So the 2022 Tokyo Auto Show has come and gone. And during the show, Subaru brought a handful of new cars and concepts to showcase. Of those, we got to see the WRX S4 STI Performance Concept, the BRZ STI Concept, the LaVorge STI Concept, the Solterra STI Concept, and the new STI ERA. Now, some of you are thinking, wait a minute, the Solterra STI and BRZ STI. Are we finally getting an STI BRZ? And the short answer is no. So the Solterra STI concept, yes, you heard me right, the Solterra EV SUV STI. Now, let me back up. As I've explained in videos in the past, STI is more of another trim level or a brand in Japan Whereas in the US, many people think of it as a moniker on the high performance version of the WRX. Now, originally that's where STI came from. It was the secret speed shop for Subaru to hop up the WRX, but it has evolved into something different, especially in Japan. Now, under the STI branding in Japan, we have cars like the WRX S4 STI, the LaVorge STI, the BRZ STI, and so on. STI is more of a appearance package, more of an upscale modeling than all performance oriented. So many of you recall the STI accessories that were available on US spec BRZs and even on the Crosstrek. You could get STI side skirt, STI front and rear lips, STI specific wheels, spoilers, shift knobs, things of that nature. In Japan, STI is now more so geared to upscaling the models. They even make an Impreza STI Sport, the base Impreza. Its wheels, its appearance packages, its interior finishes, 
more than anything. It's not solely performance. Now, there still exists the WRX STI, which is the top range performance WRX. But again, that's not the only usage for STI in Subaru, especially in Japan. So this new Solterra STI EV, one, it's just a concept, it's a design study, it likely won't even go into production. It's more of a, we did this and brought it to the show kind of thing. So as you can see from the pictures of this new Solterra STI concept, uh, there's not a ton of differences between it and the regular Solterra we saw just a couple of months ago when it was revealed. Now you've got a STI front and rear spoiler, you've got side skirts, you've got black 20 inch wheels with the cherry blossom red spoke, which is STI's color. A lot of people in the US think, oh, why are STI emblems pink? They're not actually pink, it's cherry blossom red. So we've got the cherry blossom red on the front bumper, on the side skirts, on the spoke of the wheel. We have fog lights on the front of the Solterra that the regular production model does not have. And other than that, that's basically it. We have the same output and power, same braking, same drivetrain. Nothing has been improved other than the visuals of the vehicle. Now the STI branding in Japan is not always just a visual thing. Sometimes you do get a little bit of added performance. Take the 2022 BRZ STI performance concept for an example. As we see here, options for that car include a large carbon fiber wing on the trunk lid, the revised front and rear lips, the side skirts, 18 inch BBS wheels that are STI branded, an STI performance tuned exhaust, an STI strut tower brace in the front, you get LED fog lights, and a few other options. So it's not always just visual. There are the enhancements of handling exhaust and braking in some vehicles. Now that's not so much the case when it comes to the WRX S4 STI. There are some performance upgrades there but it's still not the actual WRX STI. The S4 kind of falls in between, and as far as I can break it down for US market equivalent, it would be the new WRX GT, which is only offered with the CVT, or now coined Subaru Performance Transmission. The STI Sport models are the same. They're a automatic CVT, Subaru Performance Transmission. They don't come with the manual. To get the six-speed manual transmission, you still gotta get the hardcore real STI. So yeah, I know that the Solterra is kinda on the lame scale of the spectrum, but you BRZ owners, you guys getting the 22s, what do you think of the STI performance parts teased at the auto show? Is it something you would wanna install if US dealers offered them on your new vehicle? Let me know in the comments. So without a doubt, the most exciting and biggest release at the show from Subaru was Subaru's new EV performance vehicle, the STI ERA. Now we talked about this vehicle in a previous Subaru News episode, and a lot of you laughed at the idea of an EV STI. I don't think many of you are gonna be laughing about it now that it's been unveiled. In the video, I tried to stress the fact that STI is its own brand, and this is an STI branded vehicle, but I think some of you misunderstood and thought I was saying that the next version of the WRX STI would be an EV. Not the case. So this is it. This is the new STI ERA. All we saw in the first video was the front bumper shrouded in fog and dimly lit, but now we can see the full car and it is pretty badass to say the least. Subaru worked with Yamaha to develop this design study concept. Boasting to topple the 911 GT2 RS's Nürburgring time. Now Subaru didn't put the targets, put a sight, or call out the 911 GT2 RS. They simply boasted that they would run a sub 400 second lap at Nürburgring. Now that's a six minute and 40 second mark for the vehicle. Subaru speculates that the ERA can accomplish this task, although they have not tested it on the track yet. 
The car is boasting 1,072 horsepower equivalent from its four electric motors. These motors are fed by a 60 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. So that's all we know on the car. No other specs were released. We just have a 360 view of the exterior, the reported power it makes, and the size of the battery cell. Now, no other specs are known than this, but just based on what we know already, it's super impressive. We've got the full exterior view of it and the reported power output, and it is a sleek car. It is low, it is wide, and it kind of takes a lot of design cues from the BRZ GT300 car. Subaru plans to start track testing this car in Japan in 2022, with their sights set on targeting Nürburgring by 2023. Now again, this is just a design study slash prototype car, likely never to become a production road going vehicle, but we can always dream, right? All right guys, so level with me. Those of you that left the comments on the last video about the ERA, do you retract what you say now that we know it's a thousand plus horsepower and it looks like this? What do you think? Let me know. And last but certainly not least, this week, Travis Pastrana, the Hoonigans, and Subaru unveiled his new Gymkhana car. And man, this thing is mint. It is a 1983 GL station wagon. Now, hold on, don't laugh yet. I know what you're thinking. Just look at, look at the pictures. This thing is bad to the bone. Check that out, guys. I don't think I could have imagined a 1983 GL station wagon looking this good, but it's that classic Subaru. Straight lines, boxy, the four squared off headlights, the wide body kit, the big wheels lowered to the ground. It just looks freaking mitt. And check the livery out on this thing. It's a throwback to the 1980s US ski team sponsored livery on the GL back in the day, as you see in the back there. Now, there's no information yet on what the drivetrain is, the horsepower, anything on this car. They literally just teased it, I believe on Wednesday of this week. But guys, come on, a 1983 GL wagon, Travis Pastrana, the Hoonigans, this thing's not gonna be lame. There's gonna be some massive fire-breathing EJ series engine under the hood, pushing seven, 800 horsepower plus, and I, for one, cannot wait to see this car roast up the blacktop in a new Travis Petrana Gymkhana video. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? How do you like this new Gymkhana prepped Subaru GL wagon? And with that, that'll do it for today's episode of Subaru News. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.